All right, what's up my brothers? We got a sponsored video today. It's a request from a 30 year old gentleman living in Australia, retired Marine, dating a Russian and wants to move it all over to Miami, his hometown. So let's hop straight into this and see what he's got for us and uh, dispense some advice. Uh, subject of the email says, what is the best course of action? He says, hey Rich, uh, real big fan of your work. 30, five foot seven, 144 pounds, former Marine. Been all over the world, decently good looking, and just became financially stable. Currently, I'm a security contractor posted in Australia, but I'm making a career move to the commercial drone industry when I return to Miami. I'm starting my own small company offering drone services in the area. He goes on to say, currently, I'm in a one-year relationship with a girl that is the same age as me. She's Russian. She's an Australian citizen, meaning she has nothing to gain from me since the standard of living here is better. She's a nurse, has her own place, is financially stable, and holds a majority of the values that I deem important. Surprisingly, she has virtually none of the red flags other than being an only child. Being an only child, by the way, is not necessarily a red flag. It's only when they're like obsessed with the entire universe revolving around their heads. It's one of the problems that some only uh, children suffer from is they were so used to getting all the attention all the time and being the focus of everything. And... Um, they just don't know what reality looks like. Um, that's the only time it's a red flag. And I didn't include it in my list of 20 red flags, by the way, just because I didn't see it as that big of a deal uh, for most guys to contemplate. I mean, it, it really ties into like narcissism and stuff like that. Um, only children can tend to be a little bit more narcissistic and think that the entire universe does revolve around their heads. But anyway, um, and has many of the green flags from the book. Uh, even having a low body count too before we met while I have close to 40, which I can which I can believe judging her circle of friends and the way she carries herself. The only way, my friend, that I would um, assume that her purported statement is true is if she was in um, like a long term relationship for like she's 30. So let's say she lost her virginity at 19, was in a long term relationship for nine and a half years, dated one other guy outside of that. That's when I would say it would be believable. But if there's an absence of long-term relationships, um, I would I would question that number. It's very difficult to assess. I've talked about this many, many times. Generally speaking, um, I think safe advice is double or triple whatever number she gives you because women don't typically count one night stands, lesbian encounters, blowjobs, um, you know, any any dating you know scenario where they dated for less than a month or two. Like they generally only count long-term relationships, like any guy that they were dealing with over a longer term. Anyway, um, carries herself. I was skeptical at first, but the more I've dated her, I can believe it. Overall, I think she's a good catch and she definitely compliments my life. You're starting to sound like you have a little bit of like a unicorn complex around this one, by the way, like she's, she's that perfect and you've only known her for a year. Um, overall, I think she's a good catch compliment. Okay. Uh, although I know that I can get a girl who's younger and prettier. I've spun plenty of plates. She was definitely better with the way she is and her character. Yeah. Spinning plates gets tiresome after a while for some guys. Totally get it. Um, I liked her so much that I told her that I'm taking her back with me, taking, taking with me back home since I don't do long distance relationships anymore. And she agreed, um, a word of warning, because I know that you're asking for advice on this whole transaction. This should be something that she brings up like, Hey, you know, if you're going to leave and go back to Miami, can I come with you? Right. Kind of like the, where do we stand talk? You know, if you're dating for a few months and you're spinning plates and you're dating a bunch of women then she sort of confronts you and says, hey, you know, where do we stand? You know, we've been seeing each other for a few months. I want to claim you. I don't want to share you, you know, sort of thing. Um, similar sort of scenario. And it sounds like you're telling her that you like her so much that you that you want to take her back home. I don't like that. She should be the one saying, hey, I've heard you talking about going back to Miami. Um, what do you think of us doing that together? Or do you think it would be possible for us to, you know, make the move together sort of thing? So you making that statement is a bit of a plugged in beta move. If I'm being honest, it again, it should be her bringing it up. Uh, that would be an indication of genuine burning desire, which is chapter three of my book. And if you don't have my book, guys, get it. I know some of you are newer to the channel. Unplugged Am uh, Alpha is on Amazon, print and Kindle uh, and Audible. I narrate it myself. Get a copy. It's pinned in the top comment below. So he goes on to say, we looked at every other option on her moving to the States and saw that the quickest and easiest option was to get legally married. Wow, isn't that convenient, right? Getting married in a hostile country uh, towards men. Work visas would take two years and no guarantee she will get Miami. 
Uh, we talked and she agreed to do a prenup along with any other legal protection. She also agreed to help me with my drone company since she's a great organizer along with home duties. Just a little side note here, guys. Women will agree to just about anything, just about anything, if it serves their narrative, if it serves their long-term plans. Uh, you could tell her to, you know, stand on one leg and hop on one foot and bark like a dog if it, if it gets her to what it is that she wants to get and she'll do it, right? Um, so just because she's agreeing to certain things like a prenup or, um, you know, helping you out with your drone company sort of thing, um, you have to add right now to the end of that, like, Hey bud, you know, I agree to help you out with your drone company right now. That's how she feels today. Um, uh, in general, whenever a woman says that she'll, uh, do something or not do something, just remember add right now, you know, towards the end of it. And that's not a good or a bad thing. It's just a statement of fact. It's, you know, <laughs> It's just a reality of the world that we live in. I know that some people struggle with that. Oh my God, Rich is so negative. It's not negativity, dude. It's just, I'm, I'm pointing to cold, hard truths and facts. And if you don't like it, you know, if you want rainbows and butterflies, go to your mommy because she'll, because she'll be the one that'll lie to you, right? Anyway, so she agreed prenup, blah, blah, blah. Great organizer with the home duties. Okay. All right. Um, so then he wraps towards the end, says, I just want to know your suggestion uh, for me moving forward, this new chapter of my life. Just for some context, I wouldn't consider myself an alpha per se. I was a huge beta when I was younger, but I've managed to work on it. I'm a second born. Uh, exes have told me that I have both very alpha and beta qualities. My biggest insecurity is my obvious ADD, which has affected me most of my life. I'm not medicated and it makes me nervous about starting a company from scratch since I'm usually second guessing myself and it screws my confidence. How would you go forward uh, in the relationship business looks ADD? Any other suggestions? All right. <laughs> and then below that, he's got links to his social media, which I've already checked out. So um, good looking dude, seems to have his life together and is asking for some legitimate feedback. Look, guys, if you want to sponsor a request like this and get some feedback, uh, pinned in the top comment, there's links to my community, requesting videos, my books, all that stuff. You can do it over there. If you're a member of my community, these requests are free, by the way. So the first piece of advice I would give you is you've only known her for a year women can act and this isn't just my advice like this is something i've heard quite a few clinical psychologists state uh that aren't plugged in betas but they'll basically tell you you know give it at least a couple of years before you decide to invite her into your personal life in such a way that you might be compromised and all that means is it's going to take a couple of years to see what she's really made of to see what happens when stress is applied to relationship to see how she's going to respond to you know something big like a move over there um, you know, women can act and be on their best behavior for a good period of time. Um, it's estimated that anything after about 18 to 24 months is, is, is pretty difficult. So again, you're going to see what she's really made of within the first two years. So the, so the first pro problem that I see in, you know, the plan that you've set for yourself is a one year relationship is kind of difficult to assess to see what she's made of. You, I mean, you hardly know her. Um, uh, it sounds like she has her own place. So you're living separately. I don't know if you're seeing her once or twice a week or if you see each other a whole bunch more than that. Um, but unless you've applied stress to the relationship, like picked up and moved to Miami or you've traveled around the world, you know, like with a backpack or something like that, luggage has got lost, you've been, you know, held up, just, you know, stress is thrown to the relationship. You won't really see what she's made of. So there's the first bit. The second bit is, again, guys love to complicate their lives and justify why. I want to move to Miami. I really like her. She smells nice. She touches my pee, -pee so I'm going to move her to Miami with me. What could possibly go wrong? She's going to help me with my drone company. I just have to marry her because that's the easiest and simplest way to do it. This is how guys rationalize stupid shit, right? So let me offer you an alternative universe. Move to Miami, have her move with you, but don't marry her, right? Um, I would still give it another year to see what, what she's really made of. I mean, the only reason why you would want to commit to her on a long-term basis and, and have her come out there with you is again, if she doesn't have any red flags whatsoever, uh, and let me throw up the uh, ticker. So if you guys aren't on my email list, you should get on it because the red flag chapter is available for free from my book. Um, you just have to get on the email list, opt in, and then you can download it over there. So you're saying she doesn't have any red flags. She's got a bunch of green flags. Cool, again, you've only known her for a year. I would give it another year to see what she's all about. So if she really digs your vibe and really likes you, a woman will do just about anything, right? So she'll, she'll quit her job in Australia, sell her place, move to Miami with you without being married under the hopes of trying to get a work visa 
under the hopes of you potentially marrying her in about a year's time. But again, the only reason why you should invite a woman into your life that way in, in a Western country, I mean, Florida is probably one of the better states for fathers if you're going to have kids, is if you want to have kids. That's it. Otherwise, you know, like, why would you marry her? It, it just doesn't make any sense. So she can come with you. Like, there's 8 billion people in the world. How, there's Half of them are going to be women. In fact, I think it's 51%. So more than 4 billion people on planet Earth are women. I think it's incredibly arrogant for guys to think that she's the only true one. Like, she's the perfect unicorn, and there's not going to be somebody uh, that would be just as good, if not a better match to me, that you're maybe potentially more attracted to, that could be a better fit, you know, with more green flag sort of thing. So, you know, only fools rush in, right? Um, and this and this sounds a lot like a fool sort of rushing in. Um, a big time fool would be, you know, dating her for like a few months and asking me this shit, but you've dated her for a year. So that's a better start, but I still think that you're moving this uh, a little bit too fast. So turn off the afterburner, slow down. I know that you know exactly what I mean because you told me what you did in the Marines. Um, so slow it down and, um, you know, give it a little bit of time. Now, with respect to your question about um, the business and your ADD and all that sort of stuff, because that's really the last bit of this, of this request is just about every entrepreneur that I've known almost always is manic, has uh, ADD. Like they're, they're definitely somewhere, you know, on the spectrum with narcissism for sure. I mean, if you, if you think that <clears throat> you can start up a business, employ people, make money, make bank, you know, put a little dent in the universe. You've got to be a little bit of a narcissist. Like we, we all are when it comes to entrepreneurship. Okay. So it's not a bad thing. Um, it's a trait that's very common. If, if you were too humble, too kind, uh, coloring, you know, within the lines, um, even not having ADD be, being very like, you know, methodical and straight and narrow, um, I would question whether or not you're cut out for entrepreneurship and starting up this drone company. So I don't think it's a bad thing. The thing about guys with ADD that I've noticed, and I used, and I even did this one um, two-hour call with my old business coach, and I had him on a Playing to Win podcast, by the way. So up on the top right, I'll put a card up there for you to check it out because it was a fun conversation with Cameron. But we even did like a two-hour talk once privately about ADD um, and some questions that I had around it because I was really feeling like I was suffering with focus and getting stuff done. It's kind of a superpower once you understand it. And what I mean by that is when you learn to focus it more and you don't need to medicate yourself, um, but when you learn to focus it more um, and you're doing and you're applying it to tasks and things that you really like, um, that's when it becomes a superpower, okay? Um, you'll know that you're doing stuff that you don't like and that isn't probably aligned with your purpose in life, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, when you start to realize that you're getting easily distracted, you're working on your drone company, it's like a squirrel runs by and you're like, oh, look, a squirrel. And you spend, you know, like 10 minutes on it or researching what kind of squirrel it is, you know, sort of thing. That's when you know you're not able to, to, to focus and um, like laser point your ADD on what it is that you're supposed to be doing. So don't worry about it. Um, again, you'll know if you're on the right path because your ADD will help you focus and get more done. You'll probably know that you're on the wrong path doing the wrong thing if you find yourself easily distracted and unable to get anything done. So that's uh, my tips and advice. It's really just twofold. I mean, you're asking about this girl, you're asking about the move and you're asking about, you know, your ADD. So that's my advice. Uh, give the video a thumbs up. And guys, if you've got a similar, uh, you know, level of experience dealing with something like we just talked over here, the comments are open. Uh, chime in, you know, below in the comments and let this guy know what you think if you have some advice uh, beyond what I've dispensed here. And again, pin to the top comment, lots of useful links. Want to book me for coaching, get my book, get in my community. It's all there. Go check it out. See you guys in the next video. Peace out.